Hello students, welcome you all to the next session regarding discussion of uh, types of milling machines. In the previous session, we have discussed regarding uh, what is milling machine, principle of milling, as well as methods of milling. In this session, we will be studying regarding the different types of milling machines, parts of those milling machines, and we will be seeing some video lectures, video animations regarding how these milling machines are working. So let us study types of milling machines one by one. So the different types of milling machines are, the first one is the column and knee milling machine. The second one is the bed milling machine. The third one is planar type milling machine. And the fourth one is special purpose milling machines. So again, we are having uh, different types in the special purpose milling machines. It depends upon uh, which type of product we are developing and for particular type of products, we are using particular types of milling machines. So in almost all the cases, we are preferring the uh, column and knee type milling machines for uh, maximum operations. Sometimes even we go for uh, the usage of the other three machines also, that is the bed milling machine, planar type milling machine, as well as a uh, special purpose milling machines. So, the column and uh, knee milling machine, it is also uh, known by another name as the plain column and milling machine. Here, in the column and uh, knee milling machine, it is consisting of a horizontal milling machine where you can see in the figure uh, carefully that uh, there is a milling machine which is having some of these parts. It is the base, column, we are having the vertical guideways, spindle, overarm, horizontal axis, yoke, and other parts. So, this column, and a knee milling machine, it is also known as a plain column and a knee milling machine because the work table, it can move in all the three directions. So the work table which you are seeing here, this work table, it can move in the X direction, in the Y direction, as well as in the Z direction also. Therefore, it is also known as a planar, plain column and a knee milling machine. So this machine is designed with the spindles. So this is uh, the spindle, this is the spindle part and uh, this spindle, it is designed to rotate in the horizontal and the vertical versions also. Now in the figure which you are seeing right now here, it is a case of a spindle which is in the horizontal position, which means it is nothing but it is a horizontal milling machine. So it is uh, a commonly most popular type of milling machine and it is also known as horizontal milling machine because here, the cutter which you are seeing here, the cutter which you are observing here, this cutter is rotating in the horizontal axis. So this is the axis of rotation. So here also you can see here, they have shown this arrow mark direction. What it means, this cutter rotates along the horizontal axis. So the spindle, this cutter rotates along the horizontal spindle. And this type of milling machine, it is especially used for developing some type of grooves, it is used for developing the slots, T slots, or other types of slots, grooves. Other than this, we are using to develop uh, the keyways, gear teeth, etc. Basically, a horizontal milling machine, it consists of uh, these parts. That is, we shall study one by one. The first part comes the base. This is the base. Yes, this is the base. Second part comes the column this is the column third part comes the spindle this is the particular part spindle then comes the overarm then comes the knee then comes the saddle this is the saddle here then comes the work table so if you go for any type of horizontal milling machine it will be consisting of these basic parts and these are you can say that they are the basic parts of a horizontal milling machine. Now, if you study the function of these parts one by one. So the first part comes is the base. So base, as I was telling, this is the base. And this base we are seeing right now, it is a strong and a hollow part, which is nothing but the means of a foundation for this machine, where you can mount the rest of these parts on this particular base. Sometimes this base also serves as a sump for what? For a cutting fluid, it acts as a sump. This base, which you are seeing here, it is acting like a sump or a small tank. It is acting like a sump or a small tank for a 
cutting fluid and this pump and a filtration system they can be installed within this base so within this base you can install a small pump and a small filtration kit which is installed in the base so if you observe carefully on the base at the center part here if you at this part you have seen there is a hole on this base and within this at center of the space it is a thing what through this hole we are providing the support for what an elevating screw we call it as an knee elevating screw so the function of this knee elevating screw is it is responsible for raising the height of the work table through this knee or lowering the knee also so these are the functions of a base so once again i will tell you the base is nothing but it is a strong hollow structure which is uh, serving as a foundation for rest of its parts it is also acts as a sump for the uh, circulation of the cutting fluid and it may be installed with some pump and a filtration kit where the it is having a center at the hole which hole is nothing but it is having any elevating screw which is responsible for raising or lowering the height of the knee itself this is the first part regarding that is the base second part comes is the column so right now you are seeing this entire thing it is the column itself so you can say that on the base the next part which is resting is in larger in size it is the column itself so this column it is a vertical hollow casting and it is combined with the base to form a single casting so if you observe this column it is giving support or it is housing towards which part this is the spindle part it is housing the spindle here and the bearings as well as some of the drive controls also so through this spindle itself we are transmitting the power to the cutter and this spindle can be rotated at required speeds so some for some operations we need high speed for some operation we need lesser speeds the front face of the vertical column it is provided with a square or a dovetail guideways dovetail guideways on the which on which the knee slides up down so this is that part so if you observe here this particular part that is uh, yes this particular part they are saying this particular part which you are seeing here it is provided the column is provided with a horizontal sorry with a square or a dovetail uh, dovetail type guideways on which this knee you are seeing this knee entire table it is sliding along this particular guideways itself this is regarding the brief description of a column then the next comes is the spindle so as i am telling you this spindle is again mounted on the column itself then this spindle is nothing but it is an hollow shaft so this is an hollow shaft and this spindle it is supported by column with some suitable bearings so the bearings are required so these bearings care resist are responsible for withholding the radial and the thrust loads so this spindle is some sort hollow and tapered inside so that it can be responsible to accept the standard arbors so the spindle which is there it is obtaining the power from the motor and transmits its power to the arbor so this is the particular spindle which you are observing right now here and this spindle is hollow structure which is transmitting its power to this arbor so this horizontal line is the thing what the arbor on which the cutting tool is being mounted so this is transmitting its power to the arbor and this arbor along with the cutter it is rotating which direction it is rotating along the horizontal axis this is regarding spindle the next part is nothing but it is regarding an over arm so above the spindle and the column The next part which you are seeing is the overarm. That is uh, this particular structure. This is the overarm. So this overarm it is nothing but an adjustable overarm, which is uh, provided here above this vertical column. So from this part, from this region it starts. So which means it is mounted over the vertical column, and it is having a support to a yoke. So this is that yoke which you are observing here. This particular part. So this is the yoke. giving the support to the yoke which in turn nothing but uh, this yoke it is giving uh, a support to that of a arbor so this yoke again it gives support to which one the arbor itself 
So it is nothing black. In the lathe machine, we were discussing that there are dead center and the live center. Here also, this yoke is nothing but it is behaving like a dead center towards this arbor itself, providing the support to the arbor, so that uh, there will be proper depth, a uh, proper material cut happens. This is regarding overarm. The next comes is the knee. So the knee which you are observing here, yes, this is the knee. This particular part is the knee. And if you observe here, they have shown the directions where this knee can slide through the guideways in the square or the dovetail joint along the vertical column. They have shown the arrow move directions also. It can slide upwards or even the downwards also. So this knee is a casting which slides and upwards and downwards on the vertical guideways such that it is guiding with the help of an, a column by means of which one this uh, sliding happens by having a support like structure which we call this as a knee elevating screw. So raising this knee or lowering this knee through this guide wheels depends upon the knee elevating screw itself. Then this knee, this knee now it gives to support to which one? The next part that is the saddle. So this knee it is giving support to the next part that is the saddle. This is the particular part. This is the saddle. So after the knee, the next part which is coming for our discussion is regarding the saddle. Let us discuss regarding saddle some points. So saddle is a very important part where this saddle it is mounted upon which one? It is mounted upon the knee. The saddle it is mounted upon the knee. This is the part. It is mounted upon the knee and this saddle it is provided with two slides you are having the saddle with two slides in this picture you are seeing only one slide but if you see the three-dimensional picture the saddle is provided with two side slides that is two guideways on its top as well as at the bottom surface so the slides are machined at right angles to each other these slides which are there they are machined at right angles to each other such that the lower slide fits the slide provided on the top of the knee and facilitates for the horizontal movement. So the slower slide is there which is fitting and responsible for along the horizontal movement of the saddle whereas the upper slide which is there it is accepts the slide provided on the bottom surface of the work table that is regarding for the upper slide. Then now the next part comes is the work table. So what is the function of this work table let us see here. This is the work table, yes. So in other words, what you can say that this work table, it is mounted on the slide, saddle itself and this work table, it is having some T-slot shape structures. So this work table generally it is larger in size and it is resting on the saddle. The bottom surface of the work table here, this if, if you observe this picture here, the bottom surface here, it is having this shape like structure you can see here the bottom surface, this particular part. So this is nothing but we call it as a dovetail slide, which is responsible for sliding for the top surface of the saddle, which we were discussing in the saddle part. Now this arrangement is, makes, it, makes the work table to move along the longitudinal directions or at some right angles to the movement of the saddle. So this work table, they are providing with the T slots. You can see here, these are the slots. So what you are seeing here, we are providing with T-slots. So the purpose of the providing this T-slots is it is responsible for mounting the work hold devices, other work holding devices or any one vice also. And with this design of the work table, we can clamp the work piece rigidly on the table such that the work table can be manually controlled or even by power fed. So you can control by manually or by self fedding the power itself. These are some of the things regarding the horizontal milling machine. So here uh, on this arbor which you are seeing here, this arbor as this rotates even the cutter also rotates and this cutter is also again a multi-point cutter. So this cutter rotates in the horizontal axis. So therefore we call this as a horizontal milling machine. The only difference between the horizontal and milling machine is the position of the spindle and the cutter which we will see in the Next slide, that is the next slide. Let us go for the next slide. Yeah, this is a vertical milling machine. So if you observe carefully, it is also having the same parts, that is the base itself, column itself. So if you observe carefully, we are having the base, 
column, vertical guideways you are having, the knee eluting screw is also there, also the guideway is there, work table is there, cutter is there. So if you observe these two parts, that is the cutter and the spindle, if you observe as well as this part. So if you observe these two things, now how they are, they are different, they are nothing but they are mounted in the vertical axis. So the rotation takes place in which manner? It takes place in the vertical axis or along the vertical axis. So if you observe clearly, it is also shown here, see here, at this part where the cutter is rotating, he has shown this arrow mark direction. So in the exam, when you draw the sketch, you should show this arrow mark, which means the cutting tool of this machine it is rotating along the vertical axis. If you forget, you lose marks. Similarly, it is shown for the previous also, that is for horizontal machine, wheeling machine, on the arrow rotating along the horizontal axis. Now, the only difference which you can see here in this particular thing is the location of the spindle along the column that is in the horizontal axis the spindle rotates and this to the spindle the cutter is rotated cutter is fixed which is rotating along the or sorry in the vertical axis sorry the spindle and the cutter for the vertical milling machine they are rotating along the vertical axis when compared to the horizontal milling machine now so here, especially in this vertical milling machine, we are preferring this machine, especially when we carry out a special type of operations that is end milling operation, or it may be slot milling operation. So for particularly those operations, we are preferring this one, the end milling and the slot milling, or even for even the face milling operations also, we are using this one, even for the face milling also. So here, the spindle which you are seeing in this figure right now, how it is located? It is located in the vertical position. So this is the spindle here. How it is located? This particular part. It is in the vertical position. This spindle is located in the vertical position. And this spindle to this uh, spindle. How it is there now? It is fixed parallel to the face of the column such that uh, this spindle comes in a perpendicular to the work table. So as this spindle rotates, uh, then the cutter also rotates in the vertical axis such that uh, the material is being removed and specific operations are being carried out. So this spindle is housing with the motor and the feed controls such that in some cases, in some cases, this spindle head, it may be, this spindle head, it may be a fixed type. And in some cases, this spindle head can move in two directions that we call it as a swiveling. So right on this picture, which you are seeing, it is nothing but of a swiveling type. So how this swiveling happens? It happens along this graduation values. So here, if you observe here, there are some graduation values. So this entire spindle, it can be graduated along the two values, which means you can shift this spindle along any of the values. So it is also known as a swiveling type. So this picture you are observing again is swiveling type of spindle. Now we are having next two videos regarding how the working of horizontal milling machine as well as the vertical milling, vertical milling machine can be done here. Let us see those things. Let us go to the next slide. Yeah, this is regarding horizontal milling machine also known as plane milling machine. So if you see, this is the arbor. So this is the horizontal milling machine. This is the base, I was telling you, the column, the arbor, this is the overarm, knee, saddle, work table. This is the knee elevating screw. So it's showing all the parts to you. This is the column where you're having the control box also here, here itself on the column itself. This is the cutter. And this cutter is where it is mounted on this spindle. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so if you observe this knee, it is can be raised or lowered through this knee loading screw through this vertical column itself. So it is giving support to which one saddle, table, as well as the workpiece also. See how it is being raised along this guideways itself through the help of nail eluting screw here. This is the saddle.
this is the work table and if you observe this work table it is provided some t slots as i told you we are, we are responsible for clamping some jobs very easily with the help of this t slots the arbor and it's much is an extension of the machine builder where you can mount the milling cutter very easily and provides the support also yes you can see the work table moving now yes the cutter is removing the material so if you see when the spindle rotates even the cutter also rotates along the horizontal axis and now the material is removed at this position you can see here so the material removed in the form of a flat surface therefore you also call it as plain milling cutter of this one this is the particular machine so once again i will show the things the cutter longitudinal cross as well as vertical directions as it told regarding the movement of a table so if you observe carefully this table it is responsible for <coughs> see it is elevating the screw with the help of elevating it now if you see here the feed is given yes in this direction and with the help of these handle wheels it can be moved in the either directions also which we call it as longitudinal movements you can see here so this work table can move in all the directions that is x y as well as z direction this is regarding horizontal milling machine similarly we have vertical milling machine so this is the vertical milling machine so right now if you see the vertical milling machine all the parts are same except the position of the spindle is changed so the spindle comes in forward direction with respect to the cutter here the control box that is the electric motor is mounted everything these are all mounted in the vertical axis so electric motor this is a spindle cutter workpiece column saddle knee knee elevating screw comes here handle we are using here so this is the vertical milling machine where all the parts are same except the position of the spindle cutter electric motor is changed to the vertical position so the spindle of the vertical head it can be moved in the fixed or in the swiveling position also the same things which you have seen for horizontal milling machine yes now the work table is been raised with the help of the nail editing screw along the guideways of the vertical column through the saddle then it is moved the directions here the cutter is there which is removing as a sling where you are specially using for the end milling cutters you can see here we are performing even some slots also it may be in the form of the t slot or even a groove structure also we are using this one So if you observe carefully, first initial the workpiece is placed on the work table, and with the help of uh, the work table controls, that is the help of these clamps, you can move in either directions. You can move the work table up with the help of a new elevating screw or lower down also. Then you can move this one longitudinally or in a transverse direction. To get the desired shape, so it is moved crosswise by the saddle moment. That is in the crosswise direction, and then longitudinally also. And if you observe, and if you observe the rotation of this cutter, it is rotating along the vertical axis. Therefore, we call it as vertical milling machine. So these are the things we can even control the speed of this cutter depending upon the operations which we want to perform.
This is regarding vertical milling machine. So in the next session, we'll be discussing regarding different types of operations which can be carried on the milling machines and what will be their desired end product. Okay, students, thank you.